I have a lot of questions, and I know we're running out of time. Um, but it, it's I have okay. So one question is about um, anxieties, the sort of um, in the art pro art making process. So um, I mean, Onika, you just talked about you know the anxieties of having the audience engage the work in a particular um, way, but um, can we talk a little bit more about uh, your anxieties as you create your work or you um, or you think about your work? Yeah. Um, you, you know, the, I think it's always the thing is like, is this an idea which needs to be explored? Is this, mm. is this a quality idea? You know, because it's like Twitter, like you get, you have a hundred and one thoughts, but you know is everything worth sharing um well for some people everything is worth sharing but um for for i guess someone like me is like i'm very deliberate um and i think many artists are deliberate um in their process you are always questioning that thing that sharon spoke about before of like that experience that um kind of learned approach to art making over years or time is always something that's there so it's like you're always having to say okay is this the right decision is that the right decision and then you make a decision you're like oh this is gonna be awful it's and then you're like <laughs> depressed it's gonna this is a disaster everyone's gonna think i'm you know um not good at what i do but um sometimes you know there's some work that you make it and you know that there's something in well for me i can talk recently there's work I've been making, which I know there's something interesting about it, but because I can't articulate it yet, or I haven't shown it really widely, then it hasn't had a chance to kind of live outside of my brain and therefore um, attract any kind of reasonable um, opinion or discussion about it. And therefore you think, okay, I, I, this this work is either really great or really awful and you know it's like which one and that's the that's, i think that's the thing that you, you're always relying on the um the feedback the, the feedback and also like your own intuition your own kind of artist experience your artist brain to say actually this is a quality that would be um great if i push this some more but you know like right now it's like i'm really afraid of the work i'm making it's it's terrifying me because wow. it's very unlike what i would have done maybe a few years ago but you think okay i mean i deserve to like see it through and have it seen and then i'll take the you know I'll, I'm, I'm open to that you know you can say to me whatever it is but I think it that the idea needs to be had, and so there's anxiety at the point of like, is this a good idea? But the thing is that I, what I notice a lot in like students of mine that I teach at Edna Manley College is that once they have that once they have that idea, like okay, I this is an idea, and then they can't figure out how to go forward, or as all artists do, like you just you can't find a way out of it that makes sense for you, um, then it's the idea is scrapped. So you'll find that the, uh, the student at the idea stage will give, um, will give up several times before finding something that they think fits into a kind of scope of knowledge that they already have. And so this is, I guess, the fight that you have as an artist is, that's actually what you don't want to do is um you don't want to give up on those bad ideas initially you want to push it through and say you know okay um this you know i want to go somewhere yeah i'd love to add add to that because i think um definitely there's there's a lot of anxiety that goes on in the studio um about the work um one of the things, again, for me that I constantly think about from my, um, just my, my schooling is that, you know, where my professors would say, or my friends would say, you know, not everything you make is going to be a masterpiece, right? And so, like, just learning to, like, be okay with that, you know? And um, 
And then also, too, sometimes you make really good work in the studio, and you don't even recognize that it's good work in the studio, you know, until you have, you know, some critiques or you have um, some visits. Because it's fun, interesting, because there's a piece that I, I put in the 2012 Biennale when I first applied, and um, that, that work um, was sitting in my studio. And I remember it was sitting in my studio, and I had, like, a studio visit, and I was, like, going on about this painting. In my that I was so excited about, and I had that piece sitting in my studio. It was literally propping up my door. <laughs> 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 and I remember going on about this painting, and then when I was finished with my painting, I have these really weird friends, and he was like, "Sharon, the only the only interesting piece in this room is that." <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that just level your ego? <laughs> it's like, you, it was like, I was like, I'm painting, blah, blah, blah. It's about this, it's about that. And I was like, it's most interesting. And I'm like, that? I said, that's not even finished yet. And they're like, it's finished. <laughs> and I thought it was so funny. It was funny because it was something. So, I, I mean, that really taught me about, um, you know, sometimes, you know, we get, in, we get in front of our own way, you know, and um, sometimes they're, you know, we overthink things a little too much. So sometimes like, I try not to do that anymore. Or I try to, um, when I'm making things, sometimes it's not the thing that you think <laughs> is the most in interesting thing. Maybe it's just the thing that's right, sitting beside that interesting thing that you think, right? So I think, um, you know, in terms of like, as artists, I feel like we're always like, it's, it, for me, it becomes like art and life because a lot of the stuff that I feel I go through as an artist is what I, I imagine going through in terms of, you know, the bigger things in life, you know, like not work, not sweating the big stuff and like really trusting yourself and really like learning your, your, your own language and like being confident about those things. So I think once you trust and, and you, um, you are comfortable with yourself, you can make more, um, more, um, what do you, what do you say? More, um, conscious decisions about things that really make sense, you know? So that's kind of like what I, what I think about in my practice. And, and there's always this back and forth self-doubt. You know, you always, you know, is this good? Is this not good? You know, uh, and just learning to trust it and, and knowing that not everything you make is going to be a masterpiece. And some of it's going to be real crappy, but it's okay, you know. <laughs> you got to push through that, you know, until after a while you start making more deliberate decisions and your ideas that you want to communicate are there. You're able to present those ideas in a clear way that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you um I guess it's um being okay also are you okay with showing your bad ideas as well? Or is are you trusting our process? Am I okay? I yeah. I you know I did this really bad painting one time in undergrad, this really horrible painting. I didn't look at any references which I tried not to do and I made this really horrible painting and I brought it to critique <laughs> and I brought Critique, I realized at that moment, like, I had a bunch of other people, that that one painting was like really horrible. And I was like, I can't show this painting. It's really horrible. And um, so I showed all the other paintings. And my teacher was like, Sharon, what is that over there? And I was like, oh, no, that, that's nothing. And she's like, let's go no, bring it up here. Bring it up here. Let's put it on the wall. And one of the students was like, what is that? That is yeah. my first piece of my life. And I remember I was like really embarrassed about it because it was re like I knew it was a really terrible piece. Like I really did, and it really was a really terrible piece. But I think um, you know that kind of like taught me a lesson, you know, about that it's okay to show terrible pieces because without the really terrible pieces, then the really beautiful pieces are just you know. I mean, you need that. You need that balance. So I think. So I think. Um, I mean, I try not to show any of my. I still try not to show any of my really terrible pieces, but I'm I'm okay um, if 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 folks recognize that it's a really terrible piece. It's, I think that's okay. It doesn't define me as an artist. I think, and I think that those are kind of like the things that I'm constantly like trying to sort of like mitigate in my studio. Like, okay, Sharon, you know, I think that's okay. Um, definitely, social media is a way of sort of like sometimes testing some of those ideas you know um but i think it's like maybe it's like something that'll, that'll always be there but maybe less you know the more the more you develop as an artist the less you care about what people think about those not so good pieces maybe yeah but you yeah and then also like that critique space is you know it's interesting for the artist the critique space is totally for that it's totally for showing everything the bad the good everything and then for the I think 
when you think about your exhibitions where you are putting forward a kind of clearer um, kind of statement um, or commission or whatever it is, sometimes you do want to like interrogate it a bit and really refine out the idea that you want um, if that is your practice. You know, there's practices where it's about, you know, trying many ways and failing. Right, right. You know, I think that was one of the great things about art school because it really, you know, you, when, you're, when you're there and you, you have to look at all of your colleagues' works and some of, some of the work sometimes doesn't really make sense to you, but you see that, um, you know, that their ideas are still worth merit even though the con their conceptual leanings or their execution may be like not something that you're you know, necessarily like um, attracted to, but you can still sort of like see value in the things that they're created, they're creating or the work that they're making. Um, so when I when I think about that, it, it, it allows me to maybe not be so so hard on myself in the studio, you know? Yeah. yeah.